People, I'm sorry, but we need to talk about Jacinda Ardern, Prime Minister of New Zealand, who had the absolute nerve last week to win a second term election by a landslide. Unacceptable! And not only during her first term did she ban semi-automatic weapons after the Christchurch shootings, took on climate change with the zero carbon bill, launched the well-being budget to place health at the heart of policy in an affordable way, was the first Prime Minister to march in a pride parade, and increased New Zealand's refugee quota. Arden absolutely unapologetically led a zero-tolerance policy at the start of the coronavirus pandemic by shutting borders and locking down the country. The election result has prompted Ross Clark, nice name, I'm Ross, of The Telegraph to pen an article describing how Arden is no hero hero for having pursued a disastrous COVID policy. Now, I couldn't personally read the article because it's behind a nice, expensive, shiny paywall. Because, you know, you should have to pay for news. Take it! But I sent my paywall gnomes out into the webiverse and found out that Clark rightly proclaimed that, to date, New Zealand has had 1,880 cases and 25 deaths. At five deaths per million inhabitants, it works out at less than 1% of the death toll in Britain. That's right, less than 1%. What did Arden do to achieve this? Nothing really, much different from what Boris Johnson's government did. Having tried a bit of social distancing advice first, she closed bars and restaurants on March 23rd, two days after Boris did. It's a close one, Boris was in the lead there. New Zealand went into full lockdown on March 25th, the day after Britain. That is very strange. I mean, seems quite similar. There must be something else though that we've missed. The only thing that New Zealand did, but which Britain didn't, was to close its borders, which it did on March 19th. Maybe we should have tried that too. Maybe. Maybe not. Who's to say what difference it would have made beyond the exact evidence you've just used in your argument, Ross? <laughs> disastrous policy. What Clarko is obviously insinuating is that New Zealand might have benefited more from following Boris Johnson's COVID policy. And one of the theories is that, you know, uh, perhaps you could sort of take it on the chin, take it all in one in one go and allow the disease, as it were, to, to move through the, the population. And if they were lucky, if they were very lucky, maybe they would have got the 43,000 deaths we're now so bloody proud of in the UK. If they're lucky. Nope, Jacinda has only got 25 deaths to flaunt. 25 measly little people with their own lives and friends and families dreams and aspirations Pfft. gone 25 you could count them on three sets of hands which i do if i had three sets of hands but i've only got i, I guess you could do it multiple times They're actually surprisingly hard to do and to add insult to injury arden's election victory is bringing forth the world's first openly gay parliament and Despite the landslide she so arrogantly received, she's now considering forming a coalition government to better represent New Zealand as a whole. What the f is this? Some f***ing democracy sh Not only this, but now I hear that Bolivia, that's right, Bolivia, just voted in a socialist government after previously being overthrown by a military coup backed by the ever peaceful United States of America. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. It's a f***ing disgrace! Voting! Democracy! And I'm outraged because Bolivian political matters are a top priority for me, even though I don't know where Bolivia is. It's next to Venezuela, right? In the middle of the socialist Atlantic Ocean. That's the thing. Actually, I do know where it is because I'm watching Long Way Up and they go there and it's a great show and I love the chemistry between you and Charlie. It makes me all fuzzy inside. No, I don't want democracy. I don't want compassion and welfare for every UK citizen. I want panic. I want fear. 
I want uncertainty and confusion from conflicting guidelines. I want blatant corruption in the form of £12 billion that should have gone directly to the NHS, but instead went to private firm Serco, who spectacularly failed with test and trace and then got their contract renewed. I want our parliamentary representatives to vote against giving school kids free meals at a time when unemployment is soaring and parents cannot work. I want claps for key workers, not pay rises. I want pay rises for MPs instead. I want Dominic Cummings getting his £30,000 counter tax bill written off, whilst financial support is scrapped for hardworking families already on the poverty line. I want the arts obliterated and for all dancers to become Cybermen. And in the middle of all this, I want a no-deal Brexit, despite Boris Johnson's guarantee at the last election that he had an oven-ready deal. I want more poverty, more destitution, more corruption, and I want it now! That's what I want. And that's why I voted for Boris Johnson. Because with someone like him, you get what you vote for. Honestly, I don't dare think what would have happened if Boris Johnson hadn't got in last December. We might have ended up with a prime minister like Jacinda Ardern. A strong, confident, compassionate leader who seems to genuinely care for her people and who treat her with respect in return. Sounds bloody awful. I'm glad we didn't do that. Yeah. Also, f you, Ross Clark. <laughs> Not only this, but now I hear the. <laughs> Not only this. Not. Not only this, but now I hear. F <laughs>